Usually they are not this mellow. Um, I got lucky here. All right, everybody, welcome back to KG Constrictors. Kevin here. We're gonna take a quick look at the three Red Bulls. Um, I had uh, some eggs back in April from my Kingsville uh, Red Bull female and my Extreme Red male. And the mom kind of had a difficult time getting the eggs out. Um, it was her first time. Not really sure, um, you know, whenever you're breeding an animal, um, you never really know what the outcome is gonna be. So she had kind of a rough time. I actually had to take her to the vet. Um, I was lucky enough to get three viable eggs from, um, from her, which is good. And I put them in perlite and kept them at around 86 degrees for 55 days. And lo and behold, on day 56, the first little guy hatched out. And that's this little monster right here. He's the first one that came out. He's the largest of all of, uh, you know, of the three. Um, I haven't really sexed them yet. Um, I'm gonna have to probably do a probe on them. These guys are so small compared to like boas that to try to do the, you know, the, the thumb drag, you know, over the uh, over the vent to feel for hemipenes, it isn't as easy uh, when it comes to trying to do it with uh, with a colubrid compared to say like a boa constrictor. Uh, that's how I sex my boa constrictors. So these guys are pretty pretty uh, pretty feisty, and uh, you know in the wild they kind of have to be, uh, otherwise they're going to be food. So I'm kind of hoping that as time goes on here. They do seem to be calming down a little bit. They are getting used to the fact that this big monster looking down at them is not going to eat them. He just kind of wants to film them or, or hold them or pick them up. I'll probably get bit here. It's not really a big deal if he does bite. Oh, he's actually not. Uh, oops, hold on, hold on. It's hard to do with one hand. Um, I'm using the Osmo, DJI Osmo here to hold the camera. He's actually being pretty cool. He's rattling his tail, but he's not hissing and he's not striking. But uh, anyway, so this is the largest one. They've been, uh, they're eating frozen thawed little, uh, little, little crawlers now. Um, doing quite well, eating about every five days. And I'm hoping that all three of these turn out to be extreme reds. Uh, so hopefully they'll look more like their dad. He's like a, just a brick red. I can show him um, towards the end of this video. But this guy or gal is actually being perfect. Usually they are not this mellow. Um, I got lucky here. Saturday morning trying to get this video done. And uh, this one is actually being very, very cool. Not flighty, not strikey, and actually, oops. Um, trying to make sure that I can keep the autofocus going here. Um, and that the color looks good. Anyway, this is one of the three. Got him on uh, Coco Husk. He had his first shed on July 2nd. And his hatch date was 6.22. And he just ate the other day. So that's the first one. Second one, I'm not really gonna keep these in any specific order now. This one's hiding underneath. This one is hiding. This one actually shed again recently for the second time. I know it has not escaped. It is actually underneath here. It's probably gonna bite me as I start digging, digging through the through the substrate. There it is. Hey buddy. You gonna be you gonna be nice or you're gonna be mean? Yeah, you're not really mean, you're just defending yourself. Okay, you're gonna be cool too. Wow, I'm getting lucky today for you two. Um I think this is the third one that hatched out, the youngest. The smallest actually. Um yeah one of them hatched out on like day 56. 
Then day 57, then day 58, they all kind of pipped at the same time. I cut the eggs open uh, and just kind of let them sit in there on their own. So I think this is the smallest of the three. This one just had a nice shed, as you saw. And uh, being very handleable today. This is very, very cool. Usually these guys are real pissy. You know, hissing and striking and carrying on. Um, temperature of the room right now is 84. These guys don't like it too hot. But uh, yeah, these guys are settling down quite nicely. So that's number two. And we'll show you number three. So this is number three. This is the one that came out second. It's like the, the middle sized one. I can tell them apart. All right, uh, do I feel lucky? I think I'm gonna be able to pick this one up without getting nailed. They, are, they really don't hurt. It's just like a pin prick. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, fine. Ow! Ow! <laughs> yeah, you have to. You have to be the oddball, huh? Everybody else has been so nice. Look at you. But anyway, he's just doing what he's supposed to do. Just trying to protect himself. If they're not aggressive, if they're not defensive in the wild, they're gonna be easy pickings for some bird or, um, you know, fox or what have you. Um, once again, I don't really consider them true localities. The mom was a, a Kingsville Red locality. And the, um, the dad is an extreme red, so, you know, a, a lot of people will claim that they're breeding locality specific, but it's really hard to tell if there's anything else mixed in there. For me, I just want the nicest color possible. I don't care whether they're two Kingsville's or not. Um, they're Red Bulls, and the redder, the better. So, all right, little buddy, we'll let you go back and chill out. We're gonna show the dad. Let's take a look at dad. We call him Blaze, that's his name. This is just red of the red. Red doesn't even really show up too well in videos. But he's super, super friendly. Not pissy at all, not bitey, very, very friendly. He's like staring at the phone, wondering what it is. Hi, bud. Hey buddy, you okay? Yeah, you're a good boy. I know he probably wants to come out. You want to come out, don't you? Well, I'll take you out in a little while. So, anyway, sad story. The mom, unfortunately, passed away. That's why I'm unable to show her. So I'm hoping I get one of those babies I'm hoping is a female that I can keep uh, in her honor. It happens, you know? I've been breeding snakes now, shoo, let's see, I started in 2003. And I've been lucky, I've only lost two females. I lost uh, the Kingsville Red Girl recently. Um, she just got egg bound, you know, and it was, it was just too much for her. And even with uh, veterinary intervention, um, she passed, so super sad. Um, anytime, once again, anytime you, anytime you breed an animal, you know, you you're taking that chance because you're making the decision for the animal you know they're not wild so um, the other uh, snake that I lost over the years I lost my my very first boa constrictor Athena she was just a normal phase regular you know wild normal looking captive bred boa but not a morph or anything like that um, she passed away during a pregnancy and had complications there so I guess over the years I, sh I should consider myself lucky that I've only lost two. Um, I know some people that have lost a lot more than that um, during pregnancy from you know, complications of, of all sorts of things can happen. So happy that uh, that I've got three babies from her, and um, you know usually bull snake litters are a lot more than three. I want to think how many. I think I got like ten eggs, but most of them were bad. Um, I was able to, I incubated four and one went bad fairly quickly into the process. And then I was left with the three and the three worked out well. The three were, uh, you know, made it all the way through obviously and hatched out. Everybody's healthy and eating well and, and doing good. So, all right. Well, just wanted to do a quick little update. 
Um, go ahead and subscribe if you're new, welcome. Um, hit the like button, ring the bell for future notifications. I have got quite a few things in the works. It's been a little bit busy uh, in my normal uh, IT day job. And just wanted to do a quick check in on the bull snakes because it had been a little bit since I did a bull snake video. So, all right, let's hope this isn't too blurry here. All right, everybody, uh, enjoy your weekend. Thanks a lot for, uh, for checking in, and we will see you soon.